Bibles, turn with me to uh, Matthew, the fifth chapter. I'm going to get there in just a moment. We started a brand new series last week on This Is Our City. How many knows that God has placed this church in this community? I believe that with all of my heart. From, from 1975 on till now, I believe that God has placed this church in this community, in this city for a purpose and for a reason. Now, we're not the only church in town. How many say Amen. There's many churches in this town. There's many groups of people in this town that God has called to this community. How many knows it takes all of us, amen, to do the work of God, amen, in this community? And so, but I believe that God has specifically ordained and, and uh, uh, touched this group of believers in this body, amen, that, that were called to this city. And so we started this new series last week called This Is Our City, and we talked about who is our neighbor, who is our neighbor? Who, who is that person? I had different ones send me texts and different stuff. Some of them were quite funny uh, about the, 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 the deal of neighbor. But how knows the Bible says that we need to love our neighbor as ourselves? Get to know who our neighbors are. And, and, and many times uh, the church is seen in their city in, in two or three different ways. They're seen in their city as just in their city. I don't want to be just a church that's just in their city. Come on. That just functions inside of the city, never reaches out into the community. I don't want to be a church that's against our city. I don't want to be a church that it's us against them, that, 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 we, that we're always judging and doing those things. How many knows that we need to be a church that's open to everyone? That people can come in here, get healed, saved, and delivered, and set free uh, from sin. And I just don't want to be a church that's, in, that's of our city either, that we just blend in so much and then we become a part of, that we don't stand out and be what God has called us to be. I, I believe that God has called this church to be a church that's for our city. Come on. That's for what God is wanting to do in our community and through this church. How many say, I want to be a part of that? Amen. I want to be a part of that, that where we are touching our community and reaching into our community. And, and many, many times we may ask this question, what are we in this community for? What are we here for? What has God called us? How many has maybe ever thought that? Amen. Or even said, man, I wonder what God has called me in, in my little role of what I'm doing in, inside of the church to this community. I'm telling you, he's called you to be something that's more powerful than you can even imagine in yourself. Come on. And I'm going to get to that in just a moment. And, and I, I don't know about you, but I don't want to be just another part of a, a statistic in this community. I don't want to be just another status quo church that's in this community or in this city. I don't want to be a part of, of the group that may be griping and complaining and, and doing all these things about our city. Come on. How many knows that's going on, that's happening uh, in our community? I don't want to be uh, contributing to necessarily the crime rate of this uh, uh, community. And, and by the way, I, I was visiting with our, our district attorney this week. And we had our, our normal city elders meeting uh, this week and was praying over our community. He said the crime rate is up uh, this year from, uh, in thefts and crime. And so how many going to agree with me and pray that God is going to move in that area and th that God is going to uh, be greater, amen, than these things that's going on in our community? And so, so we need to realize and understand what's going on in our community and don't be a part of the problem, but be a part of the solution uh, that God is wanting to do in this community. That's what I want to be, as a, as a church that's for our community. And so when you think about the church and the impact that we can make on a community, really a church body and, and, and a generation has about 30 to 40 years to make an impact on their community. When you think about that, when you look at that and, and start uh, thinking about it, a church uh, has, as a group of people that's called to a specific time, you really have about 30 or 40 years that you can make an impact on a, a community. Can I tell you, we're in, we're in that process right now. We're in that place that we need to make an impact. I love what the, the Apostle Paul said in Ephesians, the fifth chapter. He said, redeeming the time because the days are evil. How many knows that we need to redeem the time because of what's going on in our community? community and our surroundings that we need to as a church stand up and be who God has called us to be and I feel like I'm like a broken record as I preach this today because I feel like I have preached this on and on for the last several months of us standing up making a noise doing something in our community but I'm telling you God has called us God has ordained us God has commissioned us to get up and do something do something to change our community. If you say all I can do pastor is pray. Pray with everything that's within you. If you have a 
position of influence in this community and God has placed you in that place. Can I tell you, do everything that you can to make a difference with where God has placed you in this community. Do whatever you can that God has ordained you to do. And I'm telling you, some of you, God is calling you out of some comfort zones. God is calling you out of some places of being comfortable and saying, hey, I want you to get out of that place and begin to take your place in my my kingdom and be who I've called you to be. Amen. And so I want to be a church that's for our community. Look with me in Matthew, the fifth chapter. This is the story of the Beatitudes. This is probably one of the longest sermons that Jesus preached and that's recorded uh, in the Bible. And it's when he was on the mount uh, there of Beatitudes and he was on the side of the hill. And, and I had the honor and the privilege to go there a couple of years ago to Israel. And I got to stand uh, not in the place of where this took place, but got to look beyond a fence and see the valley and the hillside where Jesus preached this message and this sermon. And it was right on the Sea of Genesaret or the Sea of Galilee. And, and, and there there was, there was a, you can just imagine the thousands of people that would have come and sit there as Jesus was preaching this sword and he began to speak to them and he said these words, very words he said you are the light of the world you are the light of the world a city that is set upon a hill that cannot be hidden nor do they light a lamp and put it under a basket but on a lampstand and it gives light to all who are in the house he said let your light so shine before men that that they may see your good works and glorify your father which is in heaven Jesus was preaching this sermon that day He was telling this group of people, said, hey, you're the light of the world. Can I tell you, this passage begins with the statement of identity. This scripture here is talking about that you are. Jesus did not state this in a question form of saying, do you want to be? Come on. (laughs) Heaven knows that's a challenge. He did not state this this is a possibility you could be. No, he stated it as a statement. says you are the light of the world and do some good things in this world so that men can glorify my Father which is in heaven. That's what he was saying. This is a direct command to us as a church. Amen. Uh, Interesting, uh, naturally we do not like darkness. How many of you say I like darkness? Uh, Naturally, we do not like darkness, but as we grow, we begin to learn and accept darkness. How many say that's true? As we get older sometimes, but think about this, there can't be darkness unless light is taken away. There cannot be a darkness. We don't go into a room and turn on the dark. We don't go into places and and, and, and turn on the the, the dark. No, we turn on the light. You, You can't turn on the dark. You can turn on the light. Amen. And darkness never chases away light. It's the other way around. Light chases away darkness. How many knows that Jesus said, hey, you are the light of the world? You are the light of the world, a city. I'm talking in this sermon here how that we are talking about that this is our city and God has placed us here and God has placed us for a reason. And I believe the reason he placed us here was to be a light in a dark place. To be a light in a dark place. You say, is this community dark? There's some dark things that happen in this community. There's some dark things that's going on in this community. Is, is, and many of us may be naive and says, man, this is, that's not happening in our community. Here, or this is not happening in our community. I'm telling you, it's here. The sin is here in this community. The darkness is in this community. And God is calling us and saying, hey, step up and be the light that I've called you to be. Don't hide, amen, under a basket. He, he says here, a city that's on a hillside. A city that's on a hillside. As I was traveling there in uh, Israel, and we was coming into the city of Tiberias, and it was right there on the Sea of Galilee, and, and this city was, was so lit up. We come in at night, and, and, and we'd left and wor- uh, traveled all day that day, and as, as we was coming into the city, it, it, all surrounding the Lake of Gennesaret or the Sea of Galilee was all of these cities. You could see them on the hillside all around that Sea of Galilee. And my mind immediately went to the scripture, you are a city that's set upon a hillside that cannot be hidden. Can I tell you, we are a city that cannot be hidden. We are a church, amen. We are a generation, amen, that's making an impact that people can see what's going on. Amen, and this is what he said. You are a city that's on a hillside. If you're a Christian, how many knows that we don't have to make our light shine? We can let our light shine. We don't have to make it shine. We can let it shine in this generation. Amen. Because it comes from the natural overflow of who we are in our life. Amen. How many knows that when we are full of God and full of the light, it's going to shine? 
Amen. In this community, he said, you're, you're a city that's on a hillside that cannot be hidden. Amen. You are the light of the world. And can I tell you, my first thought is this today. We cannot produce this light on our own. I cannot produce this light on my own. It's, it's not naturally who I am, but it needs to become a natural overflow of who I am. Of who I am in, 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 in God. Amen. It's a God-given light. We don't proclaim ourselves to be light. God simply said, you are the light of the world. Amen. You are what God has called you to be. Amen. In this community, it doesn't make us better or above. How many say amen? amen? It doesn't make us better because we're saying I'm the light of the world or God is saying you are the light of the world. I'm not better than anyone else or I'm not above anyone else. The difference is that we should stand out because of the source that God has put in us. Amen. That we be, we should be a generation in a culture that's standing out that we should not look the same. Come on. That we should not blend in so much that we are, amen, a part of, but we are a light that's set upon a hillside, amen. There's there's the light of the gospel, amen, the light of God's truth that's manifested in and through Jesus Christ, amen. This light of the world could have never been produced of itself or in itself or of itself. I mean, this light is the power source of God in us. And God sent his son into this world, amen, to be that light, amen. There's no energy in this uh, universe, amen, that could have produced the light that he was talking about. There's no energy source. You may look at the sun and say, man, that's the most powerful energy source. But can I tell you, the light of the world that Jesus was talking about, that God was talking about, amen, is greater than any energy source that you can imagine. It is the energy source that comes from God of who God is in us, and it's more powerful than you can imagine. Amen. Isaiah 9 and 2 said this, The people who walked in darkness have seen a great light. Those who dwelt in a land of deep darkness, on them has light shone. Aren't you glad that he shone his light into your life? John tells us that God is light and has no darkness in himself. If you go look at 1 John 1 and 5, it says that that very same thing, that God is light and there's no darkness in him. Amen. How many knows that we need to proclaim this light and say, I am the light of the world. Amen. Uh, when we begin to look at all of these situations and things that's in our life, we got to understand that it's not of myself. Amen. This light did not come from me. Amen. It come from a source that is of God. Amen. In my life. It's who God is. The light of the gospel points us to the one who came first. Can I tell you, Jesus came in darkness. Amen. Or come in light. Amen. And, and he is light to us. And you may be asking your, 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 yourself this morning, how can I maintain this light in me? How can I keep this light going on the inside of me? Uh, Peter be, began to talk about this, and, and he said that he connected himself to Jesus. In John 15 and 5, it says, I am the vine, and you are the branches. Whoever abides in me, and I in him, he, is he that bears much fruit. From apart from me, you can do nothing. Come on. Heaven knows that's a powerful scripture, that we've got to abide in the vine, stay in the church, stay connected with God, because outside of God, we are nothing. Amen. A light is only as powerful as the energy source that it's connected to. A light is only has enough energy. You, we've got all these battery operated stuff today. I'm telling you, eventually it's going to go out if it don't get recharged. Amen. It's eventually going to not shine like it needs to shine if we don't do what we need to do and charge the energy uh, source that we need to be connected to is God Almighty. Let me say amen today. If you're connecting yourself to anything else, it's draining you, amen, from the source that he's saying. If you're connecting to yourself to anything other than God or his word, I'm telling you, you are pulling away from. But I'm telling you, it's God that pours into your life and gives you the source that you need of this hour. It was Peter, amen, that on the day of Pentecost, amen, that we see that he was filled full of the power of the Holy Spirit and the Holy Ghost. He said, this is my energy source, amen, that I need to continue to shine in this coat. I'm telling you, he shined bright that day. He failed many times before that, but that day he was filled full of the power of the Holy Spirit and he stood up and he began to preach the gospel and 3,000 people were added to the church that day. Why? Because he was a light in a dark place. And his energy source come from the power of the Holy Spirit. It's the Holy Spirit that's on this earth. Jesus said it's expedient that I go away and if I do not go away, the comforter will not come. And I'm telling you, he has come. He is here because Jesus went and sat at the right hand of the Father. And it's the Holy Spirit working in and through us. And it's our power source today, amen, that we can sustain the light that God has called us to be. 
It's the Holy Spirit. Amen. Zechariah, the fourth chapter, said, It's not by might nor by power, but it's by my spirit, saith the Lord. Amen. How many knows it's, by, it's not what we can do within ourselves? It's not the might that we have. Yes, God gives us abilities and talents and all these things, but it's none of those things. It's only by and through the Spirit of God that God is wanting to use those talents and the gifts that you have in your life. Amen. My second thought of this on this city on a hillside is this. How many knows we got to get to, together as believers to shine brighter? A city that's set upon a hill. How many knows that one light by itself don't shine too bright? One light, if you looked at one light, I've, I've driven out in the countryside and you may see one little light out there in, in the middle of the countryside and you say, well, that's pretty bright right there. But how many knows there's something different when you pull up onto a city and there's lights by the thousands, amen, that's gathered together. It's bright. You can even see the glow of cities as you're coming into larger cities. If you've ever flown an airplane, you've seen as you've come over cities the lights that was gathered together. He said, when we get together, we're brighter together. Come on. How many of us, we need to get together and love one another? <laughs> Hallelujah. There's so many scriptures I could talk about right now on the scripture about getting together with one another. Amen. But we've got, we shine brighter when we begin to work together. He said, you're a, a city that's set up on a hillside. There's power in community. There's, we're better together. How many of us, that God has called us to community? God has called us to serve one another. God has called us to live in community together and work this out and shine brighter together. And I, I want to ask three things today or talk about three things. And, and, and it's talking about this. Why was we called to be the light? Why did God call this church in this community to be the light? I want to answer that question today if I can. And the first thought is this, to shine in a dark place. How many knows that we should not hide what God has given us under a bowl or a basket? Come on, you're a city that's set upon a hillside. He said, why do men put it under a bushel and hide it? Come on, how many knows that we need to shine in a dark place? Close, close your eyes for just a moment, every one of us. How many knows that it's dark? It's dark. Close your, can you imagine a world without light? Can you imagine who you'd end up marrying if you chose them in the dark? Had to throw that in. How many knows that light is essential to us? Light is impossible, it's impossible to do some things in the dark. It's difficult to do a lot of things in our lives no matter what, but how many knows it's even more difficult if we're trying to do it in the dark? Can you imagine just for a moment playing baseball in the dark? Throw, somebody throwing a 100 mile an hour ball at you in the dark. You trying to swing and hit that. Can you imagine playing golf in the dark? You can't see. You can't see what's going on. Uh, what about reading? If you try to read in the dark, how many's ever tried to read in the dark? Pretty difficult thing to do. This is another good one. How many's ever tried to hammer a nail in the dark? You're gonna get you're gonna get hurt. Or you're gonna hurt something. Amen. Light is vital to nearly everything that we're involved in in, in life. Life, uh, light itself is also important to living things, and, and our earth depends upon light. Without light, things do not grow. How many's ever tried to grow a garden in a shaded area of your yard? It was pretty much shaded the whole time. It, you got to have light for things to grow. And that's the way it is with God. We need the light. And I'm telling you, it's light. If we want to, to change our culture, and you say, why, why has God placed us in this city? Why has God said this is your city? Because he wants us to shine in a dark place. He wants us to overcome the darkness that's around us. Amen. Light is essential. Amen. And, and we, we are in a dark, dark world. How many knows there's perversion and and addiction and racism and, and suicide and abortion and all of these things and dishonesty, they reek in our community today. And there needs to be a light in a dark place. There needs to be light that's showing up in this place. Amen. Uh, we see Isaiah 5 that talks about woe to those who call evil good and good evil and who put darkness for light and light for darkness. How many ever read that scripture? We're living in that culture where they're looking at things that it's good and saying that's bad. And they're looking at things that says that's, that should be light and they're saying it's dark. Can I tell you, we're, li we're in a world that is messed up. We're in a world that's confused. And how many knows that we need to shine brighter than we ever had as a community of believers, of people gathering together and saying, hey, this is what we stand for. This is the word of God. Amen. Amen. If we live in such a dark place, why in the world would we ever want to withhold the light from people? 
If we live in such a dark world that's around us, that's suffering from, from all these things that I just got through saying, of suicide and abortion and all the things that's going on in our community, why in the world would you want to withhold that light from somebody? Why would you want to hide it under a basket or a bushel? Hey Amen. Let your light shine. Let your light shine in this community. If we don't let our light shine, if we keep putting it under the basket, heaven knows that our light eventually will go out. Amen. If we keep trying to cover it up and saying, you know, I'm I, <laughs> being reserved or however, whatever words you want to use or however you explain that off, I'm telling you, what you're doing is you're just really taking that bow and putting it over your light. And I'm telling you, eventually your light's going to go out. Amen. We need to let our light shine. The second reason why that we need to let our shine, a light shine in this, in this community is to show the world direction. Let me know that, that he said to give light to everyone that's in the house. We've got to give some direction. How many knows that, that we need direction? Where there's no light, there's no revelation. Where there's no light, there's no revelation. Nothing uh, is hidden uh, down in the darkness, secrets of our soul. Uh, when a light is flashed, how many knows that sometimes we can't even stand? How many's ever walked into a room that was dark and immediately a light hit you? It was just like, whoa, Everybody, everything stops. Why? Because things are exposed in, in the light. And that's what God is wanting to do in us and through us is expose some things and reveal some things. I'm telling you, this, this, not only does light give us direction, how many of us it can help uh, uh, those that are around us if we let our light shine? Quit being selfish with your light. Amen. Quit saying it's just for me to give me to direction. Amen. I realize that we're all working toward this in our life. And somebody said, I, I'm working on getting my light brighter, Pastor. Amen. I don't got it all together. And I understand that. Amen. But how many knows that God is wanting us to work in this area of our light, not to be selfish and saying, I'm just going to shine this light for me. But no, we're going to shine this light in the world that's around us so it may help someone else too. Amen. Come and follow me as I follow Christ. Isn't that what Paul said? Amen. Come follow me as I also follow Christ. We need to, we need to start telling some folks, hey, come follow me. Amen. I, I don't have it all together. I don't think I've got, got it all figured out yet. But I'm telling you one thing. I know the answer. His name is Jesus. Amen. Come follow me. Amen. As we follow Christ. Amen. In our lives. He, he's in, in Psalms 43 and 3, he said, send out your light and your truth. Let them lead me. Let them bring me to your holy hill and to your dwelling. How many knows that we need to let God's light lead us in the direction that we need to go in our lives? Life. Amen. The third thing is this it, it reveals what's wrong in our lives. He said, Let your light shine before men that they may see your good works. Amen. And glorify your Father which is in heaven. Amen. We need to let our light shine. How many's ever mowed your, your lawn at dark or at night because you didn't get it done when you're supposed to get it done? But you mowed your grass and you put that lawnmower up in the garage that, that night after everything was done and then you walk out the next morning and you're just like, what? How many places did you miss? Yeah. How many things was undone in that area of that? How many knows that, that light reveals what's wrong? Light takes and shows us what's wrong in life. Amen. How, how many's ever chosen an outfit in the dark? On Sunday mornings, a lot of times I have the opportunity of getting dressed in the dark because I like to let my wife sleep in and I get up pretty early on Sunday mornings and I don't know how many times I have put on the wrong color of socks. Amen. In the dark. Because you can't see in the dark. How many knows that that's what happens? That, that, that light will reveal what's wrong. And how many knows that we need the light, amen, to reveal what's wrong? We, we don't shine the light to condemn. Amen. How many knows that we shine light to reveal? We're not using light to condemn people. We're not using this light that I'm talking about that said that you are the light of the world to condemn people and judge people. No, we're trying to bring revelation to people that they can see who God is in this world. Amen. That they can see God in us. Amen, that's not condemnation. When you're doing it in love, amen, it's not condemnation. When you're saying, I really want to help someone, I really want to reveal to them who Christ is, amen, in their life, it will change the things that you look around in your life, and it will change the people, amen, when we begin to let the light shine in us, amen. I close with this story today. There was two cars that were waiting at a stoplight. The light turned green, but the man at the light didn't notice it. A woman in the car behind him is watching traffic pass around them. She begins pounding on her steering wheel and yelling at the man to move. Have I hit anybody yet? 
The man doesn't move. Now this woman goes ballistic inside of her car, ranting and raving at the man, pounding on her steering wheel in the dash. The light turned yellow, turns yellow. The woman begins to blow her horn, flips him off, and screams curses at him. The man hearing the commotion looks up, sees the yellow light, and accelerates through the intersection just as the light turns red. Now she's beside herself, screaming in frustration as she misses her chance to get through the intersection. As she's still in mid-rant, she hears a tap on her window and looks up into the barrel of a gun held by a very serious-looking police officer. The police officer tells her to shut off the car while keeping her, both hands in sight. She complies, speechless of what's happening. After she shuts off the engine, the police officer orders her out of the car with her hands up. She gets out of the car and he orders her to turn and place her hands on her car. She turns, places her hands on the car roof and is quickly cuffed and hustled into the back of the patrol car. She's too bewildered by the chain of events to ask any questions. She's driven to the police station where she's fingerprinted, photographed, and searched, booked, and placed in the cell. After a couple of hours, an officer approaches the cell and opens the door for her. She's escorted back to the booking desk where the original officer is waiting, officer is waiting with her personal effects. He hands her the big bag containing her things and says, I'm really sorry for this mistake, ma'am, but you see, I pulled up behind your car while you were blowing your horn, flipping off that guy and cussing a blue streak at the car in front of you. And then I noticed the Choose Life license plate holder, uh, the what would you do, uh, what would Jesus do and follow me to Sunday school bumper stickers and the chrome-plated fish emblem on the trunk. So naturally, I assumed you had stolen the car. How many knows that's true? <laughs> Who are we in our community? Today, maybe you're sitting here, either you are living light or you're not. Maybe you're in this room today and you're sitting here and you're maybe living in darkness. Maybe it's, maybe it's drugs, alcohol, some other substance abuse or some other addiction. It might even be depression that you are battling and fear and constant anxiety. How many knows that when you look into our soul today and say, God... What's shining in my life? What's shining through me in, in this world? Amen. How many knows that, that light is hope? Light is hope, and God wants us to live in hope. You may be, uh, there's a second scenario here. You may have come uh, into light and know that you've been charged of being the light, but you may have walked away from the light. That may be you in this room today. I don't know where you're at with God, but can I, can I tell you, God is ready to rekindle your candle. God is ready today to flip back on the switch. God is ready to charge the batteries of your life so that you can be a light in a dark place today. Amen. I don't know what's going on in your life or where God has placed you or the position that you may be in life. And I'm telling you, God is wanting to do something great in our lives if we'll allow Him, amen, to let His light shine through us. Can you stand to your feet with me this morning? If you've ever walked away from the light, if you've ever stepped in the shadows in recent days, can I urge you right now, come to Jesus. Come back to the light. Come back to who God has called you to be. If you've ever come to Jesus, if you've never come to know what this light is today, can I urge you, can I challenge you, please come. Please come to know this light. I said it a while ago and I mean it. How many knows that light is hope? Light is hope. Some of you said, man, I don't see the light at the end of the tunnel, Pastor. I don't see the light. I don't see what's going on. Can I tell you, man, you're in a good place today. The Bible said today is the day of salvation. You're in a, a great place to recharge, to, re, to reflip some things in your life. Amen. You may be in this place today and say, Pastor, I've been letting my light shine. It's shining bright. Amen. But I'm telling you, you need to understand that you've got to always stay connected to the source of who God is. And I want you to bow your head.